Welcome back into the Illini Inquirer podcast. And let's get some real insight into new Illini offense coordinator, Barry Lunny Jr. with the man who covers the UTSA Roadrunners better than anyone. That's JJ Perez from InsideRunnersports.com. Uh, JJ, welcome back. Great to talk to you again. But uh, I guess Illinois traded a loss in September for an offensive coordinator. Uh, apparently that's what happened. So what do you think of this hire from Illinois' perspective? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Good to be back. It's uh, wow, what what a what a season of off season change for UTSA football. I mean, they are, not only is Barry Lunny UTSA's quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, he's basically Jeff Trailer's right hand man, being associate head coach. So it's a pretty big loss. But at the same time, you know, Barry Lunny took this job. He was he was the interim head coach at. Arkansas and he was one of the finalists to be one of those to to for that job so it was a little bit of a coup for UTSA and Jeff Trader to get um, you know Lunny here in the first place so um, being able to hold on to him for two years look I mean this last season was remarkable for the Roadrunners there the offense broke every record you know in place and a big part of it was what uh, Lunny did and you know he's arguably the most successful coordinator in UTSA's 11 year history and it'll be some big shoes to fill but uh you know it's hard to blame him him and him and Bielema are really close he's got a significant salary increase headed up there so just a uh, big news day all, all the way around yeah Jeff Trailer obviously has done a great job and got that big contract because of it um and, and obviously Jeff has a history on the offensive side of the ball as well so what was the partnership like with, with Jeff and, and Barry? And, and was this unquestionably Barry's offense to run and call? Yes, 100%. I, I mean, he kind of just took the reins and, you know, it was all his fingerprints on, on the offense. I, I, I don't know how involved, you know, we could say Trader was, a, a, except for decisions about, hey, going for it on fourth down, you know, what, what do you like in specific situations? And what we saw from Lunny is, you know, a very um, analytical mind, you know, previous previous coordinators here, they tried to, for lack of a better word, stick a round peg into a square hole. And what Lunny did when he, when he came in, he, he used his pieces as, as good as he, as good as he could. And he didn't, you know, try and change too many guys that, you know, you look at quarterback, you can't make, you know, dual threat quarterback, Frank Harris, a pass only quarterback, but eventually from, from the beginning, but eventually he was able to, to mold him kind of that way. So it's just a matter of adapting to the personnel you have. And, you know, I, I think he's going to do a great job there in, at Illinois. How would you describe the offense that Barry Loney Jr. runs? I'd say it's multiple, you know, you want to, you want to stay balanced and keep opposing defenses um, off balance. But I, I mean, he's going to, UTSA had a fantastic running back, uh, a, a very good offensive line, but then you look at the wide receivers and they, this was the most production we've ever seen out of the wide receiver group. So um, he's going to take shots down the field. You know, he's going to, it's a, it's a spread offense. I don't know how many of it is going to be, you know, run pass option. But, you know, certainly I, I describe it as a spread multiple offense. Yeah, so what do you, how does he operate? I, I remember watching them, and there were some RPO actions. Um, you know, Frank Harris didn't run a ton uh, against Illinois, but he certainly was a threat. So um, he, he has spread, but like you said, it's multiple, JJ. They use tight ends a lot. They, they still are physical. It seems like it's a mix of kind of spread concepts with the more like what Lonnie knew at Arkansas with his like physical uh, attack. Right. So a lot of 11 and 12 personnel, you know, two tight end sets and they, he loved, he loved the tight ends. You're right. I mean, when in, in UTSA's ball game, they lost one of the tight ends and it was a big, a major factor in some of the struggles. And, you know, some of that's along with the offensive line kind of coaching and blocking schemes and what you're going to see for that. So it'll be interesting to see if there are any other changes to the Illini coaching staff and, you, you know, the guys he recruits also, you know, he's got to go in and recruit the players that are there one to kind of, cause this transfer portal deal is it's, it's changed the game. So it's going to be multiple and, and he's going to use his personnel to as best as he can and not stick a round peg in a square hole. I loved what you're starting to say about Frank Harris. He had a great year this past year, quarterback, his efficiency went through the roof as a passer and was, was a really good runner as well. Um, 
how did he mold himself uh, around Frank and, and how did he mold Frank into such an effective quarterback? So, so when Barry Lunny and, and Jeff Trailer came in the first year, it was right in the middle of COVID. They didn't have a spring. They didn't have a summer. And they had a few weeks before the season started. So they didn't give Frank the keys to the offense until towards the end of their first year here. And this past year, we saw some of that trust kind of pay off with Frank Harris, allowing him to change the play. So there's a lot of trust that, that, that Lunny kind of instills in his quarterback to – you know, be the coach on the field and, you know, direct the offense. And what we saw as the tenure went on between Lunny and Frank Harris was more trust. And Frank became more, you know, willing to, to, to see that Lunny's plan would be effective if, you know, he didn't tuck and run so much, if he stayed in the pocket and threw some balls away and lived to play another day. So, um, you know, he's going to work with the pieces he has. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of personnel he decides he wants to run the most and, you know, the type of players he recruits also. Yeah, we're really interested to see what, what he wants in a quarterback uh, here at Illinois. What kind of quarterbacks was he recruiting at UTSA? So he liked the kind of – he's a lefty quarterback, so he had a, a heart for, for some lefties. And then, you know, a, a traditional – pro style quarterback and not, not your typical dual threat guys. Um, those are the guys he recruited. And, you know, the, the, the quarterback they have in this class is, you know, a traditional pro style quarterback. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, he sticks with that mold. Yeah. That's what uh, Illinois has been doing for the last couple of years here too. So um, obviously we saw it here, JJ, Zachary Franklin had had a massive game uh, against Illinois and, and sincere McCormick almost 3000 yards the last two years under Barry Lenny, what did he do to get the most out of his playmakers? Cause certainly at Illinois didn't feel like uh, this year, Illinois got the most out of their few offensive playmakers. Yeah. I, I think what he did the best was kind of spread things around to different guys. You mentioned Zachary Franklin, but there are two other wide receivers that had had big years too with JT Clark and Joshua Cephas. So yeah, at one point Franklin was unguardable with some offenses and then they started double teaming him. So that opened up, you know, other guys to step up. And then, you know, Sincere McCormick actually had a down year from his production from previous years. He ended up having more total yards, but less of an average. So that was a function of other teams stacking the box. So that's what happened. That's what allowed some of the passing game to step up. So I, I guess the whole point of that is he's going to be able to adapt to what, you know, defenses are giving them. So it'll be uh, something interesting to watch because, you know, Illinois does have some firepower on the offensive side. Yeah. And uh, obviously Barry was a really good recruiter at Arkansas. What, what did he, uh, how, how did he, you know, show himself on the recruiting trail for, for UTSA, knowing it's a different kind of recruiting than, than you will at the power five ball. Yeah, so it's actually probably a little bit harder on the on the G5 level because of the lack of resources and obviously facilities and whatnot. So he got in there. I mean, he you know, he's not he's not from Texas, but he got in there. He mixed it up with the with on the local recruiting scene. And, you know, the quarterback that he had this last cycle is from Austin, which is near near San Antonio. So uh, he's going to get in there and work. He's a tireless worker. He's, you know, one of the first guys in the office, one of the last guys to leave. And you know, he's dedicated. And that, like, like I said, when he came to UTSA from Arkansas, it was, you know, he's kind of a, a legend at Arkansas and, and, you know, he's got a pretty good resume and, you know, at some point in the near future, he's going to be a head coach one day. Okay? So it's a pretty good land for Illinois. I think. Are you pretty confident about that? And, and what gives you confidence that, that he's a head coach someday? Well, I mean, he was a finalist for the Arkansas job. He did he did a pretty good job when 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 they let go of uh, Morris and, you know, he j just the aura he 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 walks about. I mean, he's very analytical, forward forward thinker, and he's young. I, I mean, he's young. He's motivated, and you know that this is the not for a program like UTSA. You want your assistants to be able to jump to the next level so that they could one day continue to rise up the ladder. And that just seems like the natural progression of, of, of what Barry Lunny's career appears to be heading, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and as a future head coach, and really as a, as a Power 5 coordinator, 
you meet reporters like us, JJ, a lot, and, and you're kind of a public face of the program. How, how would you describe uh, him, him in front of microphones and all of that? Because obviously uh, you get under the microscope a little bit even more at a Power 5 program. Right, right. So we, I think we, we talked to him the first year he was here and then they didn't make him available to the, for us the second year um, and COVID stuff or whatnot. But, you know, he, he's, he's pretty accessible. Um, you know, he, he plays it straight. He, he's not going to give you too much X's and O's like, like any coordinator will. But um, I always enjoyed, you know, picking his brain about, you know, opposing defenses and, and the different schemes. And um, like UTSA has played Army when the first year and just, you know, picking that, you know, triple threat option and the, the various ins and outs. And, you know, you could tell he just has a, a, a forward thinking mind about things. So he'll be a, he'll be a good interview for you guys. So what's this mean for UTSA moving forward, JJ, uh, where, where does Jeff trailer go? As you said, a guy who's been so important to his, his success the last couple of years. So minutes after Illinois announced, you know, Barry Lunny was the new offensive coordinator, uh, Jeff trailer promoted, his wide receiver coach and O-line coach to co-coordinator status. So um, they're trying to keep the band together as much as possible, keep some of the verbiage. And, you know, Will Stein at wide receivers was kind of a, a co-OC almost this past season. And, you know, he'll do a good job and he'll be the, the role of play caller. And, you know, they'll just, you know, try to keep it all going. They, they set every statistical record last season. And um, it's just a matter of time before, you know, some of that stuff, you, you lose a little production. There's more film out there on you, but you know they're trying to keep the band together as much as possible. So they will be in in, in need of a wide receiver coach now. Um, so that's kind of the only thing pending at this point. Well, JJ, before we let you go, just just overall, what do you think of this hire for Illinois? What are they getting in Illinois? You know, you got a guy with some head coaching experience, although be it all in term in term head coach. You got a guy that's coached at the power five level before and a successful up and coming, you know, group of five coordinator. And, you know, there's no reason to think that his success can continue moving to the next level. So overall, I think, uh, you know, they hit it out of the ballpark. JJ inside runner sports.com continue the great work, man. Uh, you do a great job covering that program. That certainly seems on the come up. And uh, it, this is, this is what happens with some of these group of fives, right? So they fully establish themselves like uh, schools like Illinois come and take from them. But Jeff trailer seems to be doing a great job. And, and so are you, JJ. Can't, can't thank you for your time. Man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.